everybody, and welcome back to this episode of Security Matters Hawaii. I'm joined today by David Wilson Esquire. He's coming to us from Denver, Colorado, where he's trying to get himself unburied from the snow. Uh, Dave, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Sure. How are you, Andrew? Good, man. Good to see you again. Uh, so you're out plowing your driveway? Foot and a half of snow. <laughs> we don't have that problem here, oh, at least not yet. I don't know what will happen with global warming, but so far we're doing all right. Um, so you're the principal of Titan Information Security Group, Dave. Um, give, go ahead and give our audience who may not be familiar with you, um, you know, just some of your background, uh, much as you care to share, and you know, kind of bring us up to where you're at today. Sure. Well, I grew up in New York on Long Island. Um, I, my goal was to join the FBI. Um, I got an Army scholarship. I went to law school, uh, became a JAG officer. I did that for 20 years. Um, throughout my career, uh, as a JAG officer, I did a lot of prosecuting and defending, and then I got into technology and started doing what's called operational law. Ended up at uh, NSA, the National Security Agency, and worked for General Hayden and then General Alexander and helped stand up what's now considered a cybercom. And that's where I learned a lot of the, the technical background because I didn't really have a technical background at that point. I see. And I did some space control as well, denying how we could deny our adversaries the ability to use satellites for communicating, taking pictures, wow. uh, things like that. And um, so from there, and then I helped up, I helped stand up what's now Army Cyber. And then in 2010, I retired and decided I'm going to start my own business and started Titan Info Security Group in 2011 basically doing cybersecurity and the law uh, from a mostly from a risk perspective. And um, for about six years, I did a lot of policy work, risk assessments, um, advising companies on how to be more secure, what they can do to recover from a data breach. And then I was, things were a little slow and my friend came to me, who, he's a reservist and he said, hey, they're opening the contracts at the courts. Do you want to get back in the courtroom? I'm like, well, I love the courtroom, not really knowing what I was getting into. <laughs> and so he, uh, I signed up and took a contract as a court appointed attorney doing dependency and neglect cases wow. where I represent parents having their kids taken away. Um, you would think normally for abuse, but around here, it's usually for neglect because we have a lot of people that are addicted to meth and uh, ah. now marijuana and things like that. Wow. And so I've been doing that, um, <clears throat> which basically consumed my life because I went from zero cases in 2017 to 95 cases in 2018. <laughs> my gosh. In less than a year. Wow. So, um, but my, I'm, I'm trying to transition a little bit away from that and get more into cybersecurity. I think this time around, I want to do it more from the data breach perspective and do investigations and defend companies that have been breached versus, you know, trying to help with the preventive side. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we'll get into it a little bit, but um, I'm just not seeing a whole lot of movement in the preventive side. So. Yeah, it's interesting. There's, I, I concur. I mean, there's, there's more awareness on the DOD side. We've now got this uh, cybersecurity maturity model certification that's going to be, or something we're going to be audited against. But that's ordered. That's just to, like win a contract. Um, yeah. how, what they're going to do with the people who fail audits? I guess they'll lose business. But there's not the teeth of like law in a whole lot of cyber yet. That, that the way I understand it, maybe could you give us a little bit of. The, what's the difference between like a, a statute and regulation and like where, where does law come in? I think most people are familiar if you steal something that that's theft and there's a law against that. But, yeah. you know, where does it come from? You know, it's not, this is not the code of Hammurabi days, right? We, this has evolved mm -hmm. from some place, but I, I'm just not aware of the where does where does the teeth of law come into play? Because there's civil, mm -hmm. isn't there civil law and like legal law or judicial law or whatever it is. I don't know the differences. Yeah. Well, so from a cyber perspective, um, there are very few laws. Yeah. Um, it's mostly criminal. Okay. So if you, if you're a hacker and you hack somebody's network, uh, and, and cause a data breach or you steal information or intellectual property, what have you, um, every state has a law against that. 
Okay. So, uh, and the federal federal government has laws against that. Okay. Um, and that makes it criminal. When you get into um, other types of laws, more of the civil or administrative type law, then you're getting into um, regulatory requirements of things that companies have to do. And like you were mentioning, primarily when they're dealing with the government. Okay. So you have to, you have to deal with, um, I'm forgetting some of the acronyms, but some of the regulations out there and, and those are laws, but they only apply to a, a specific sector of people, those dealing with like the federal government, if it's a federal law or state government, if it's a state law, Okay. but most states do not have, um, sort of civil laws that are dealing with, um, cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Um, with the exception of like California and Massachusetts, they've Im implemented some laws, but those are primarily to allow their attorney generals to go after companies that they feel have not implemented. Um, you know, they were breached and then they, the attorney general's like, well, you haven't implemented, um, good cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess the best example everybody's probably familiar with is HIPAA. Yeah. If you violate HIPAA, you don't have good security and you allow patients, um, personal information to be mm -hmm. leaked and okay. released, then you are subject to the HIPAA laws, which is not criminal, but your company can be fined by the FTC or, uh, one of those federal agencies. Um, are, so are the federal laws, do they, is there like a, a subscription like so if i'm a, a hospital administrator or let's say i own kaiser or because i guess those are all nonprofits. i mean who's mm -hmm. held responsible there's just like a fiscal responsibility to the regulations and so an investigation shows that i was negligent in applying some safeguards and then i'm i get like a fine or is it is it a kind of are there is the board held liable or is that kind of stuff happening or um yeah, well, the FTC is finding people. Ah, um, people, let's say individuals. It, especially if you have a, a, a huge HIPAA data breach. Okay. Um, they are holding them accountable. Not significantly, but they are, they, they have some, put some teeth into um, the, the HIPAA law and everything. It's just, again, it's, it's bureaucracy. So it's really mm -hmm. hard to figure out what you can do, what you can't do. Um, hmm. and I, I would say to get a little bit back to the basics. Okay. So you have, you have a lot of jurisdictional issues. So the federal okay. government doesn't have, um, jurisdiction over you unless you're dealing with, um, like, let's say for instance, the internet, the internet allows the federal government to get involved because the internet goes all over the country, it goes okay. from state to state. And the best example is like an interstate highway that goes from, let's say, Colorado into Kansas. Okay. Um, that's pretty much controlled and there's federal funding for that because it's going between one state and another. Okay. So otherwise you'd have Colorado and Kansas trying to work out a deal between themselves. Okay. We will pay for everything up to the border here. You pay everything <laughs> up to the border there. And you may have like a mile in between where neither side claims it and it's full of potholes and it's all dirt. I see. Okay. So, that makes sense. Government can then pump money into that and make sure that highway is free flowing. And you get into the same thing with utility companies that are crossing state lines and things like that. Huh. But then the states have their own laws that are supposed to regulate what's going on within the state. Okay. And it gets tricky when you do interstate commerce, commerce over the internet, because a lot of states have talked about um, internet tax and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you end up into the battle of like, why should somebody in Massachusetts pay a tax to a company in Colorado when they're in Massachusetts and they've just bought something over the internet. So, right. So we're like retail sales tax out of state. I, let me, I understand that. Yeah. Let me, um, let me ask, let me posit it a different way. So is, mm -hmm. would it be considered different if I'm, let's say I'm hacking across the internet, across from Kansas into Colorado, into a company? versus if I were in 
caught in, outside that company's parking lot and I was using their wireless network. So it was only local. I'm truly not on the internet. I'm just, I've hacked into their outdoor Wi-Fi or something. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm not using the internet or transiting. Is it, and then if there's no state law, have I, have I broken any law? I mean, I don't even know. Um, it, it gets tricky there yeah. because is there local Wi-Fi connected to the internet? It would not, it, it, yeah. It I mean, like, you know, in, you know, in our industry, how we'll have like a maybe a camera with this a direct wireless shot right back into their local network. You know, it's about out in the parking lot. So let's just say you jumped on that that like, that hot spot, and you know, you weren't really on the internet. You're just direct into their network. From you if know, if it's from, wholly contained, and you can argue that it's wholly contained, then no federal laws would apply. Wow, imagine that. So but, that's an interesting thing. Yeah. We shouldn't teach the criminals, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, um, you know, it, it becomes really difficult. The problem is most people in the courts and a lot of the sort of U.S. attorney and district attorney's offices don't fully understand mm. all the technology behind it. Gotcha. I would be looking to find an expert who can tell me, is that somehow connected to the Internet? And does could there be a leak from that system? out to the internet and then can you apply federal law based on that so wow. it would be a big fight depending on what side you're on so. yeah and, and I'm, I'm wondering i'm wondering if that's why there's still not a lot i know these are you know they when it's over the internet the attribution is very difficult and attribution is just that finding out who who's the party that started it and you know we know or we've talked on this channel a little bit about tour networks and the ability to hide you know enter a enter a network and then exit a different place so you don't you know it's hard to figure out who you are because uh, that's yeah. all encrypted. Um, so, is do you think that that's why it's 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 been a slow sell for like law enforcement to engage, um, you know, like cyber crime? And because it, it seems like the criminals aren't getting as much attention as the like the breaches, like you said, a HIPAA violation or a PCI mm -hmm. violation or something like that. Well, mo uh, it it would appear like most of the hackers are coming from outside the U.S. Yeah, yeah. I would true. argue that they're they're coming from inside the U.S. as well. Yeah. A good hacker is going to hide their tracks and bounce all over the place. Sure. Um, if they're truly outside the U.S., then you have uh, extradition problems. Okay. So typically Russia is not going to allow us to extradite hackers from Russia yeah. and bring them over here. Um, in most cases, they get caught somewhere else, like in England or somewhere like yeah. that, and we snap them and bring them back. Um, that's the big problem. And then, like you mentioned, trying to figure out who it is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even the, the attribution piece comes down to, like, the old adage, it could be a dog on the other side of that keyboard. Yeah. How are you going to prove who's actually pressing those keys, even sure. if you figure out what computer it's coming from? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I know, you know, to your point, we have, we definitely had some good arrests this year from some uh, Russian guys. We caught, I know, caught, caught in the Mediterranean, some in London. And, you know, there's this big issue of using the Internet for child pornography and, and, and actually the trafficking of kids and all this kind of stuff as well. So I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to, you know, I hope we continue to have ways to do that. If we encrypt everything, I'm concerned that criminals may hide behind some of that. You know, I'm hoping it doesn't come to all that. Um, let's, um, I want to talk about the difference between physical security and then cyber security um and then and then uh, in our next the next part i want to kind of tie that into the risk like what what companies ought to be thinking about um real quick are there are there better laws about physical security today in your opinion than than about cyber security you know if i if i've if i've been attacked on a property is that property owner liable because he didn't have good security there are the Children that, you know, we have these shooting incidents in schools. Are, are the schools liable for not having good physical security? Um, do you think those laws are clearer or are they just as kind of murky today as uh, like cyber law? Um, I would say murky. Ah. Because, wow. and a lot of it is regulatory. They're trying to regulate. You can do this or you can't do that. And then it, a lot of it comes down to um, if you're going to accept state money or federal money then you have to comply with certain standards like okay. FISMA and you know all those those different things and, sure um, you know unfortunately <clears throat> we have a lot more regulation um and a lot more theories but not a lot more security 
Interesting. And as, as far as I'm concerned, it still comes down to the basics, and people just aren't doing the basics. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, we'll tell you what, we're, gonna, we're about on our break time. We're going to take about one minute. We're going to go pay some bills, and we'll be right back with David Wilson. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po. Mabuhay and aloha. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means. Let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hey, aloha. Welcome back to this episode of Security Matters Hawaii. We're in the Think Tech studio, Hawaii. We're live with Dave Wilson from Denver, Colorado. Dave, thanks for joining us today. We were kicking around this, this, this difference between physical and cyber like law. And you mentioned that, you know, there's there's regulations based on if the state's funding things or the Fed are funding things, for example, for school systems. Um, I'm interested where where is this liability going to fall? You know, how does a how would a school principal be either guilty of negligence or guilty of noncompliance um, if they're getting, let's just say, funding from both, you know, what's the what's the measure? How how, how does this happen? I'm I'm just not a I don't know what they walk in and do and say, hey, you did nothing. Well, then you're you're negligent. But if you've done some things and you think those are your best practices or all you could afford, is there is there liability still there from a you know from a law standpoint? I guess is my question. Um, yeah, there is. I guess it it would come down to what level of negligence. Um, okay, and like. If it was gross negligence, that would be easier to prove. And it's in most cases, it's going to be a civil matter. I see. Um, or if they decided, hey, we're going to fire this principal because he didn't do his job. Okay. Um, the, the problem is we don't, like, here's a good example. Okay. When I was um, prosecuting in the military, I would get commanders who would come to me and say, hey, I got to get rid of this soldier. He's a bad dude. He's screwing up. And I would ask him, okay, you got the paperwork? Can you show he knew what the standard was and he wasn't performing to that standard or he was screwing up or what have you? No, no, we just, you know, reprimanded him or chewed him out. I said, you need a paper trail. You yep. can't just say suddenly, here's a standard. You didn't meet it. Now we're getting rid of you. He's going to come back and say, well, it would have been nice to know what the standard was before I started. Sure. Um, or, or that was trained properly. Yeah. Sure. Understood. Another good example is the uh, deputy sheriff down in Florida after that shooting. Yeah. They literally prosecuted him. Oh, wow. Claiming that he didn't meet the standard for, and I don't know what they actually charged him with, but um, he, they said he hid while the shooting was going on right, instead, right. Of instead of going in. Him more. Um, that's, to me, that's very unusual. Mm. Hopefully you can figure out who's going to go forward and who's not. Like when I was in Iraq, there were people that I knew that I was told, oh, so-and-so over there, he's, you know, says, I'm not going outside the wire. You can't make me go. That's like saying, dude, you're in the Navy and you won't go in the water. <laughs> um, so you got to figure out who, who will do that and who won't. Um, mm. But it, it's mostly from a civil perspective. You're going to get people suing and, um, it, it's tragic, but when you really think about it, things happen, you know, and sometimes you just can't control it and yeah. you can't legislate your way out of it. I it's see. just, you have to, accept. life is not perfect and things are going to happen. You know, granted, you need to go back and do lessons learned. Where did we go wrong? What could we have done differently? How could we have been more alert? But, you know, there, it's always, 
everybody wants somebody held accountable. And, yeah, it's interesting, right? And then, but yeah, no one. I find that no one wants to participate in the the earlier on stages when we had indicators of problems and people don't stay engaged with it, right? They want to. They want someone yeah. else to deal with that too. Like somebody else is always accountable, never me, right? That's a problem, you know, with security yeah. in general, right? Yeah, which is a, a great segue. I am not a fan of the trial bar in this country. Uh, they what? keep initiating all these class action suits oh. for data breaches okay. and pointing at the companies and saying, you did this wrong, you did that wrong. And I was reading on a site on, um, I think it was the trialbar.org bar or something like that. And they were describing all these class action suits that have been dismissed because they couldn't show, the plaintiffs couldn't show that they had an actual harm. You can't go in there and say, well, my social security number was stolen. So I'm assuming I'm going to suffer identity theft and I'm going to have all these damages. It's like, um, how about you wait till you actually have a damage and ah. then you sue. So it's like a and bandwagon so they, effect. Oh yeah. And they were all thrown out of court. Mm. Um, personally, and this may not be the, you know, the popular side, I would rather defend all of these companies that are breached mm -hmm. because that is such an easy argument. And, you know, what I would do is say, okay, let's put consumer X on the stand. They say, oh, Walmart suffered a data breach. I used my card there. I suffered identity theft. Therefore you're liable. You owe me money. And I would ask them, okay, well, let me see. Where else did you use your card that, that day or that week or that month? Mm -hmm. Well, I used it at Target. I used it at King Supers. I used it at uh, Home Depot. I said, oh, okay, well, because they were breached, they were breached, they were breached, and they were breached. Yeah. How can you prove your identity theft was because of something that happened at Walmart? And they can't make that link. Yeah, and especially and I think they, most consumers wouldn't have that capacity. I mean, that's a, there's a lot of forensics there, and I, I don't know if it's, you know, typically it's, it probably can be found in the log files. I don't, it depends on what evidence they would have, right, for, for where the data, typically this data, these big data bins will show up on, on uh, Pastebin or, or Reddit or somewhere, and then, you know, so there's some uh, assumed attribution, but that doesn't mean it's true. So somebody has to go through that, I guess, and forensically confirm where the data came from. And I don't, I don't know yeah, that. You've got, to, you've got to get into the underground and then start doing an investigation and try and pull that all that information. And from what I've seen, the these attorneys or these law firms initiating these class actions, they're not doing that. Um, and I know what they're doing. They're filing this lawsuit, they're getting all these victims, and then they're they're settling. They're trying Nothing to get a settlement. Gotten, yep. Nothing has gotten to the point where a court has to make a ruling on whether there was negligence or a lack of reasonable security on the part of these wow. companies. And they settle, the law firm gets a big payout, and the plaintiffs, the consumers get maybe a hundred bucks each. I see. So, and then so yeah. and, and then when we read about these big fines, so those are regulatory, like cause cause the I guess if you have on your website, you know, I'll protect your information, da da da. So you've you've said you would, and then they get breached. So is that where the FTC comes in and says uh, because you didn't uphold this clause, you get like a fine or something. Like Experian, I think, got fined, and I don't know if Target yeah. got fined. I don't, is that is that what's the mechanism there? Because it's not criminal, right? It's a regulatory, or or is that considered a crime? I just don't know. I don't know the difference. No, it, it's it's regulatory, and it's okay. you know potentially false advertising. And I I won't okay. I won't name names, but there's a very large company um, that does a lot of software and hardware. And um, they they advertise, oh no, don't worry about it. We're secure. We have X Y Z, and I'm like, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Ouch. And uh, I I did an assessment one time with uh, with another guy, and we were told, hey, uh, you can't get into our company because we have this, you know, again, our ABC software or whatever. I'm like, okay, really? Five minutes this guy was into their network. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you people need to rethink. And I'm not bashing the software. You gotta have the software. You gotta have the antivirus. It's just, you need a sort of a whole suite of security and then awareness and yeah. and you gotta do the risk assessment. Yeah, and the people, are, the people are always still, always still always that easy link. Yeah, we've got a few minutes. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk about what, 
what are the what should the business community walk away with from a risk perspective? You know, based on what you're seeing uh, today, you know, let's what what what's the advice you would give them? Um, they've got to do the hard work. It's it's too easy to say, okay, well, we've got this hardware and this software. We're secure. We don't have to worry about it. Okay. It goes back to the people. You could have the best security in the world. And then one person clicks on an email and opens a door and allows the hackers in. Mm -hmm. um, a perfect example is when I was in the military, we had the Cipranet, the secret internet. And Bradley Manning went in with a thumb drive and downloaded a bunch of secrets off of the Cipranet and then gave them away or sold them or whatever. Um, he was convicted of espionage, he or she, whatever that person is now. Yeah. And, um, you know, he was a bad actor and it's not even, it doesn't even have to be a bad actor. It could be, I'm not paying attention. Mm -hmm. An email comes across. It looks like it's from the boss. You click on the link. Next thing you know, you've opened the door or you've sent off a payment, uh, to China or somewhere like that. And sure. so it's, it's human error. That yeah. is the weakest link. Yes, yeah, it is. I agree is, is the, um, are you think, if the companies like that, if so I've done if I've done no awareness training and then we get victimized like that and there's a breach and we have to report it, is do you feel that that is negligence? If I had did not train that employee and he did that, I mean, is that would I be open as a CEO or an owner perhaps to like a gross negligence type of uh, a criminal charge? Um, not a criminal charge, but okay, to civil. Uh, certainly, yeah, to a lawsuit. Okay, and that's a lot of what I would tell CEOs is that you have to be aware of what's going on with the security of your company. If I come to you and I talk to you and your response to me is, well, talk to my IT guy. I'm like, no, the IT guy is not going to be on the stand. You're on the stand. Mm. You have to be able to answer the questions. If you can't, then you're negligent. Cause, wow. And I, and I tell them, I bet you if I ask you how are your financials, you could give me detail about all your financials. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to security, they're like, uh, I don't know, ask the IT guy. <laughs> like that, that's a long starter. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. Hey, I hope you're paying attention out there in, in, in security matters land to what Dave's telling you. Um, you may be liable. You need to be engaged from the top on down in your organization. You need to understand what's going on because you may be on the stand. Dave, mm -hmm. thank, you, thank you so much today. I really appreciate your time. I hope it hasn't snowed another foot for you while we've been on the air. Um, no. Anyway. Uh, hey, we and I, I can say real quick. I love cross-examining people, so I'm coming after them. <laughs> nice. Go get them. Go get them. I hope to get you on here again soon. We'll get an update from you maybe in Q2. Take care, Dave. Aloha. Thank you.